from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There is an exercise I do when I first start studying the scripture lesson for the week. I write down every verb in the passage. It helps to slow me down to be writing like that, and to read the passage as if for the first time. And it's often instructive to the meaning of the passage to notice where the action is. Got to tell you, it did not take much effort to see where the action was in this passage. Six welcomes in three verses. Welcome is clearly the action we're invited to consider today. So what does it look like to be welcoming. Jesus wants us to learn how to be welcoming as individuals and as the people of God. He talks about welcoming people as how we welcome him and welcoming him as our way to welcome God. I'm guessing that most people think they want to be welcoming, but I wonder if it's harder than we imagine. Martha Grace Reese, in her book, Unbiding the Gospel, uses the analogy of buildings to help us consider whether we present ourselves more like the Lincoln Memorial or a medieval castle. Now think for a moment about the Lincoln Memorial. That's the one in DC that you don't have to wait in a big long line for. You can get there by lots of steps. There's also an elevator. And when you get to the top, Lincoln is sitting in a chair as if you can come and learn at his knee and the words that defined his presidency are on either side. A medieval castle with high walls and drawbridges that come up and guards at the gate. We live in a world that has taught us to be afraid. If not for ourselves, at least for our children. It's tempting to build the castle walls and raise the drawbridge of who we are to eliminate strangers from our lives. Right after I had my son, Logan, I was in the hospital and I had a roommate who had turned on the TV in our room and one of those shows was on, you know the kind, where humanity is at its worst, family against family, friends against friends, and all for the entertainment of the viewing off audience. I remember she asked if I wanted to watch it. And then we started laughing about how maybe it would be better if the first words our children heard weren't the ones coming out of these people's mouths. It felt like the right decision, keeping them safe from the world for a little longer. But when does the desire to protect ourselves and the people we love get in the way of being welcoming, which is what Jesus asks us to learn to do. As Kathleen Norris puts it, to reject the world is to reject other people. And to reject other people is to reject Christ himself. How do we welcome people who are new? who are different into our lives, recognizing that our welcome matters because we do it on behalf of Jesus. Just as last week we talked about commissioning people to serve on behalf of Christ and this church and this community, in the same way, every time we meet people, we can remember that we have been commissioned by Jesus to welcome them. 
How can we turn the barriers we put up into bridges that reach out to other people? When Chase was eight years old, a woman approached him and his mom, Glennon, at the grocery store said that she said to him, what a handsome boy. What do you plan to be when you grow up, young man? And the eight-year-old looked at her and said, I plan to be kind and brave, ma'am. His mom said it might just have been the best moment of her life. She's been trying to raise her kids to know that their job isn't who they are, that their character is who they are. So when Chase was asked that question, he quite naturally answered with the words about the kind of character he was working to develop. What's so awesome about this shift is that it means we're not just waiting to discover the answer to some riddle for ourselves and for our future. We're working here and now to be who we want to be becoming. Kind and brave is something people of all ages can be. Never too soon and never too late to become who we've been created to be, who God has created us to be, kind and brave. These are character traits we need to develop to be welcome and welcoming and generous of spirit, spreading love and serving others with a cup of cold water that meets them where they are thirsty. But you know, welcoming is about more than welcoming strangers. It can also be about welcoming people you already know and care about into something that means something in your life. Your faith in God your decision to follow Jesus. The world is full of people who are looking for something they may not even be able to name. And we are commissioned to welcome them in the name of Jesus, to share with them how the love of Christ has filled us up and transformed our lives. So what are your stories? Your moments when you feel as though your faith has made all the difference. Is there someone in your life who needs to hear the good news from you? Can you share a cup of cold water to help them with their spiritual thirst? What barriers do we need to take down so we can build bridges to allow people to hear about the faith that sustains us so much in just three verses of the Bible. This is an invitation to see how we see the people in our lives, to open our eyes, to change how we view the world, and ultimately it's an invitation to change ourselves. As we share the communion feast this day, I invite you to bring to mind the faces of the people you are called to welcome into your life and into a life of faith. Maybe they're strangers. Maybe they are your closest friends. Maybe the welcome comes with words. Maybe it comes in actions. May we be open to God commissioning us to be welcoming agents in the world we live in this day. In Jesus' name, amen.